Achieving Excellence in Fundraising, 5th edition. Hi, I'm Bill Stanjakevich. This is the first day from the Fundraising School, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Dr. Jen Shaker, Associate Professor at the Indiana University Lilly Family School of Philanthropy and the lead editor on the new edition of the Hallmark textbook on fundraising, Achieving Excellence in Fundraising. And I'm so privileged to be part of the editorial team that also includes Dr. Jean Temple, Dr. Sarah Nathan, and Pat Danahay Jannon, as we have worked together to bring you this fifth edition. And Jen, first of all, for our audience who might not be aware, this is the fifth edition. What is the history of this textbook? Well, this book dates all the way back to 1991 when uh, Hank Rosso wrote a lot of the first edition and edited it along with his associates. So that was the first edition. And then uh, Gene Temple took over as lead editor for the second, third, and fourth editions, which came out beginning in 2000 and most recently in 2016. So we have a long history with lots of amazing editors and authors over 30 plus years now. And of course, Henry Rosso, uh, along with his wife, Dottie, are the founders of the fundraising school who then gifted the fundraising school to Indiana University back in 1988. Gene Temple facilitated that gift. And as you said, continued the uh, progress of this book from one edition to the next. And of course, is such a cherished member of the editorial team to this day. Jen, what really stands out for you about this edition of the textbook, now the fifth time around for Achieving Excellence in Fundraising? Well, I think what stands out to me most is that we started working on it in spring 2020. So everybody remembers spring 2020. And we began really our work in earnest on this book from our homes, like you see me today, um, in the beginning of the COVID pandemic. So that really is a framework under which we, uh, the editorial team, which includes Bill Stan, who is here with me today, Sarah Nathan, Jean Temple, and uh, Pat Danahay Janin, who is our editorial assistant. So we began this work during that time. So there are 39 chapters in this edition, and you mentioned the COVID-19 health pandemic that started in 2020. How did that inform the authors as they worked on their various chapters? Well, that, that is something that we asked all the authors to think about. Um, what does COVID mean for fundraising? And keeping in mind that we are writing before we really could know that, we did try to really think about what does this mean for the future? What are the newest reports and data coming out right now about how COVID is affecting how we raise money, how people give? And so that was one of the main things that we thought about throughout the process. And of course, 2020 uh, is referred to as the year of the twin pandemics, as there is a reawakening around racial and social justice and reconciliation issues. Jen, a similar question. How did that reality inform the authors as they worked on their chapters? Yeah, so we were really thinking about that as well. And uh, George Floyd, the murder of George Floyd was in May 2020. So just in the time when we were putting the book together, asking authors to write their chapters. And so we really asked people to think about uh, inclusive fundraising, right? So approaches that are inclusive of all people and all communities, and, and also to think about social justice and fundraising. And in fact, we have a chapter on that in the book for the first time. So those were threads that ran through the book along with thinking about COVID, crisis leadership, uh, social justice, uh, digital technologies and how fundraising is changing and evolving. Some of that, COVID pushed some of that along, right? We learned we can do fundraising meetings by Zoom and by video in ways we never could. So that's all part of the framework that we, we were thinking about as editors and we were asking all the authors to think about as well. Jen, how important is it for fundraisers? We mentioned these two topics from, from 2020, the health pandemic and the racial and social justice reconciliation pandemic. And again, to emphasize, the content is written in an evergreen style, meaning a lasting style, that, that the information here is written in a way that is applicable for years. And so we want the audience to know that as well. But even though there is a chapter on racial and social justice, and there is a chapter on crisis leadership, each chapter 
has those themes within. How important is that for fundraisers to understand that these are not just set aside topics to visit, but that are infused throughout fundraising on a day-to-day, month-to-month, year-to-year basis? Right. That's absolutely true, Bill. And, you know, we we came out of the project really feeling like there are principles of fundraising that stand the test of time, ideas that go back to the first edition with Hank Rosso, but that those, uh, those are in an evolving context, right? And, and so how we fundraise today is different in many ways. And all the chapters needed to consider that. You know, what does that mean that we have, have, have and still have the COVID pandemic and all that we've learned from that for fundraising? What does that mean that we are finally paying more attention to philanthropy among diverse communities? And so, and how do we build and evolve our fundraising to keep keep that at the forefront, right? Keep social justice and ways that people give that have been underrepresented, under understood in fundraising and philanthropy at, at the top of our thoughts and conversations. And one of the examples is, of course, we honor the legacy of our founders, Hank and Dottie Rosso, and there are still elements of their teaching throughout the book. But during our editorial discussions, there were also some things that we removed that might have been true in 1974 or 1978 or 1985 that just aren't true anymore. And again, and that's what Hank and Dottie wanted when they gifted the uh, fundraising school to Indiana University, is that research would continually inform the fundraising school. And we see that in this textbook. Right, that's absolutely true. We really took a hard look at what um, what was still tried and true and what no longer applied. And a lot of those decisions also related to, to the research. And so of course that's another signature of the book and one that we really focused on in this edition is how do we keep bringing more research in? When there is research, let's bring it in. Sometimes there's not research yet. And so we're working on that. And that, you know, that gives me work to do for the rest of my career, right? All the things we still need to know about fundraising. So, but what do we know and how do we put it in the book? And then how do we interpret it so that fundraisers can use it? And again, when we talk about research, In this textbook, you're not going to find chi-square analyses. You're not going to find a t-test or an r-value or a confidence interval. No, our researchers have translated the research findings for practical application. Jen, who are these folks? Who, you know, how would you kind of give a general description of who the authors are for this edition of Achieving Excellence in Fundraising? Well, we're so thrilled that all of the authors are our Uh, faculty, academic faculty, or TFRS faculty, uh, alumni of the School of Philanthropy. Uh, We have some doc students who are part of the chapters, and then we have some other friends, leaders in the field who wrote chapters with us. And so we just really are excited about our, our 50 plus authors that wrote those 39 chapters, and we really feel like they cover a wide breadth of experience and expertise and bring it all to the readers. And Jen, how is the book organized then? Is it just techniques? Do we talk about principles? Do we talk about philosophies? Do we talk about organizational structure? How is this book organized? All of those things. We talk about all of those things, but we've tried to do it in in an order of events that would uh, really start you with the foundation in fundraising. So our first section is about uh, ethics, your law, your own personal philosophy of fundraising. And that's something that we really evolved and developed newly for this uh, edition. Um, the joy of giving, what, what is it that drives donors? Like, wh- how do they feel when they give? So we began the book with what we think is foundational information that we should be considering before we get into the techniques and the strategies of fundraising. And then we just move through from there with sections on uh, sort of your structure 
right? What do you need to have in place when you start fundraising or you restart fundraising, right? And so things like your planning processes, uh, your budgeting, your marketing, all those things that kind of bundle around your fundraising efforts. And then we move from there into uh, research about different populations of donors, strategies for fundraising, you know, all those familiar topics, like how do we do these things? Uh, and then also thinking about our fundraising team. So who's part of your team, your fundraiser, your volunteers, all, all of the people who shape your efforts with you as the fundraiser. So a comprehensive textbook used by university and college programs across the United States and around the world, now in a fifth edition, Achieving Excellence in Fundraising. And I'm excited because the greatest strength of the fundraising school is that wherever possible, our content is research-based, translated into practical application for fundraisers. And this textbook is giving us even more research-based information to put into our curriculum for our public courses, which more and more are being involved, are being offered in person across the United States. Uh, also, our online offerings are more extensive than ever before. Talk about a change caused by the health pandemic, and online is going to stay vibrant for the fundraising school moving forward across the United States and around the world. Of course, we have custom training where we can bring uh, customized courses to your nonprofit your association, your region, again, anywhere uh, in an international or United States location. We have our quarterly webinars. We also have our free podcasts that come out every week. And of course, information on how to obtain the fifth edition of Achieving Excellence in Fundraising. All of that is available on our website at philanthropy.iupui.edu forward slash the fundraising school. Our guest today is Associate Professor Dr. Jen Shaker, the Indiana University Lilly Family School of Philanthropy, who led the editorial team for Achieving Excellence in Fundraising. Our producers today are Jennifer Boffman and Mike Anthony. I'm Bill Stanjakevich, and now you are now more fully informed on this first day from the Fundraising School. Mm -hmm.